Well, hello there. Welcome to the FEK Notation Part 3. I'm recording the same thing for the second time because I already recorded one and then the audio was so bad. I tried for like an hour to fix it and it didn't work. Okay, <laughs> we can start now. So, if you're new here, this is what's going on. This is a chess position, and every chess position can be written in a string of characters. The best use case for this is to store chess puzzles. Computers use this kind of notation to talk to each other, to communicate chess positions with, with each other. They're not going to send screenshots to one another. Come on. Okay. And so I'm trying to use something like this. I'm trying to make something like this for the game of Catan. If you don't know what Catan is, Boom, this is what Catan is, it looks like that. Now, in the first part of this, of this series, we did the base board. This is the base board with its resources and its numbers and its tiles. We tried to represent this using these rules on, on the screen here. You can, you, know, you can go watch the first video or the second video for that. Um, I did add a little thing here. I made it optional to separate the ranks with slashes. Again, you can watch the older videos for that. In the last part, we managed to work with this the user or the player placements now for the player placements i wrote down the rules are we going to revise that a little bit just you know to get into the habit of things okay so for each player placement the board is divided into 11 ranks now here you can see this is one rank like for these like slanted kind of uh, edges and there's these vertical edges so that makes the second rank I'll here. Um, these ranks alternate between vertical and horizontal ish edges and corners between the tiles. So again, you can see this. This is the horizontal ish one, and these vertical ones, the whole like thing makes one rank. <clears throat> so there's eleven of them. Okay, with the eleventh rank at the top, the player placements are laid out from left to right, starting with rank eleven. Settlements and cities can only be placed in the horizontal ranks. Now, if we place the settlements in the vertical ones, we won't be sure if it's on the top or the bottom. But for these guys, we always know where they're going to be. If there's one road and then a settlement, it's going to be right here. Two roads and a settlement, it's going to be right here. So horizontal, it's easier. <clears throat> Verticals don't get cities or settlements, only horizontal ones do. Come on. Okay, let's go. We can do this. The symbols for cities is C. Settlements is S. Roads are R. The symbols assigned to the players from 1 to 4 are A to D. We don't want to use numbers because they can get annoying. The number of empty spots is written as a number, as a count. We don't we don't write like empty, 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 empty for each empty spot. That's just, that's weird. We write like 3 because there's 3 empty spots. Or in this case, there's 1, 2, 3, 4. So we just write 4 and we move on with our life. See, you can see here I've written 4 here. So we write the count and since the maximum number can go up to 10, we don't want to use two characters. You don't want to use a one and a zero for 10. So what do we do? Hexadecimal, baby. We use an A. Okay, let's keep going. The number for empty spots, one to A. The placement uh, consists of either the number of empty spots, as we just saw, or by the type of the placement, road, settlement, city, followed by the symbol of the player who placed it, A to D. A slash is written at the end of every rank, except the last one, because we already know it's the last one. We don't need to like write a slash. We're trying to minimize the number of characters. We're trying to express the most information in the smallest amount of space, okay? Okay, so for today, we were going to use the resource information. Again, I already recorded this whole thing, so I'm just going to like go over it. I'm not going to waste too much of your time. You're welcome. So for every resource, there's a total of 19 total cards possible. There can only be a 19 wood, 19 sheep, grain, and ore. And uh, so that's like total 95 cards across all resources and there's 25 development cards there's two monopolies two road builders two year of plenties five victory points and 14 knights again i'm not going to explain to you what they do or how they're used that's in the Catan rule book you can look that up i don't need to explain you Catan. i'm explaining you the notation okay resources for player we were working with this we were working with this example and we actually solved this example, but I'm going to go through with it, so don't worry about it. So what we're going to do is, for each player, we're going to count the resources. So he has 5 ore, 1 grain, 4 brick. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write that. We're going to write 4 brick, 1 grain, 5 ore. The order I've used is the older one that we were already using, this one. Wood, cheap, brick, grain, ore. You know, just to keep things consistent. 
So this guy has five ore, five ore, five O at the end, one grain, one G, four brick, four B. You know, that's easy. No development cards. And when, when they have development cards, we're going to use R, um, R for road builders, M for monopolies, Y for year of plenties, V for victory points, and K for knights. So imagine if this guy had like two knights, we would have done after the, uh, sorry, we would have done 2K, you know? Not after the hash, before the hash, I'm sorry about that. 2K or like one monopoly or like two road builders or whatever they have. We can just write in the same way as we're doing the rest of the resources. Same goes for all players. We divide the players using slashes. Our good old friend slashes are back. Now what the hashes do is for each player we need to um, record the number of nights they've played so far. With the knight cards you don't just need to uh, count the number of nights that the player has in their hand. You also need to count the number of nights they've played throughout the whole game. So that's what we do. After the resources are done, we put a little sla we put a little hash there. Now the hash is another separator, like the slash. We have a hierarchy, so we have four sections in the whole notation. We have four sections. We have the board placement with the resources and the tiles and the numbers. Then we have the player placements. Then we have the resources and the game store. We're gonna get to that. And to to separate all of these, we're gonna use a space bar, a space. And within a specific section, we're going to use slashes to divide the ranks or whatever, or the players. And within each slash, we can use hashes. So we have three layers of separators to separate our different sections, right? So the hash separates the resources from the number of nights a player has played. So each of them has have played zero, so we can write a zero or we can write nothing. It's the same thing. So after the hashes, you write the number of nights a player has played. And there you go. That's all the resources that are going to be. Now what's the game state? There's two simple things in the game state. Number one, who's the active player? Whose turn it is? Here we can see in this still that we were using, it's player one's turn. Who's that? A. We're just going to write an A. Boom. Here. We're done. We're going to add a space because that's our high level separator, remember? And then this is actually the dice roll stats. Now in the game of Catan, there's a thing called a balanced dice system. Now what that means is when you're creating a game you can choose whether the dice rolls, the two dice that you roll are going to be random or balanced. If they're balanced the overall structure, the overall statistics is going to be like of a bell curve, like a normal curve. It's going to be a normal distribution and if it's random it's going to be whatever. We don't know. So what we want to do is we want to be able to record the number of uh, twos that have occurred, the number of threes, fours, five. Again, we can roll from two to 12, any number. So we need to record the number of uh, rolls that have occurred in uh, for those particular numbers. So how many twos have rolled, how many threes have rolled, how many four, five, six, sevens have rolled, you know? And we, we record this so that when we load the game from this, pos from this notation, we can continue the game and keep it balanced if we have to make it balanced. So we need to be able to store this. Now I used uh, a random example from the internet. I'm just going to do Catan Dice Stats here. And I'm going to find uh, the image that we were using. Yep, I was using this in the, in the video that I recorded that I never uploaded, that had shitty audio. So here we are again doing this whole thing. So yeah, two rolled two times. So there's a two here. And we, we use the slash to divide all these uh, different numbers. Three rolled once, so there's a one. Four rolled once, there's a one. Five rolled ten times, so there's a ten. And all the numbers, you can follow that. It's very easy. And there we go. That's our whole notation. It's complete. We've stored the board placement, the player placement, the resources, and the game state. Now, this is our, finally, the Forsyth Edwards Christian, Christian, hello, notation, the feck notation, or the fuck notation, whatever you call it. I don't care. Um, so here are the sections. There's the board, board placement, there's the player placement, there's the resources, and there's the game state. Now, here's the thing. When you're putting them in order, you need to ask yourself, which is more important? If there, without the board placement, the game can't exist. You need the board placement. Here, let me show you. You need the board placement in order to pl place things. So this is always going to be there. You can't have the game without this. You can have a notation that's like this and it, the computer, you know, will read it and display that. Perfect. You can have player placements and no resources or game states because the game hasn't started yet. You can have something like here, something like 
like this thing right here but without any of the like players having drawn cards yet so you can have something like this perfect now when you place your second settlement in Catan you all automatically get the resources that are associated with that settlement and so as soon as the game starts even before you roll your first dice you're gonna have some resources that's why the resources are the second last thing here and it's because something like this can still exist because the game hasn't started yet and at the very end you have your game state the active player whose turn it is and this guy now the thing is if you have something like this this is going to mean that it's always the first player whose turn it is. It's always going to be A. And you're not going to have any, you can't have development cards without having rolled any dice. So if you don't have the, the game state in there, that means the game has just started. There haven't been any roll, dice rolls, so you cannot have development cards for any of the players. So the computer needs to check that. Now this is our final notation. I took a bow in the last one. I'm going to take a bow in this one. It was a, it was a long ride. Now we've we've established the whole notation. We've de we've decided everything. All the rules are there. I'm gonna write them up formally before the next video. What we're gonna do in the next video is gonna we're gonna write code. We're gonna write code that's gonna read the notation and display it on the board. And then it's gonna take any position on the board and then convert that into the notation. Why we need to do that? Because right now this is all theoretical. We're just assuming this will work. We need to be able to prove it by writing a program that can read this and write into it. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next time. Very short video because again, I recorded the last one and the the, the whole audio thing was, was really bad so I couldn't upload it. And uh, yeah, that was it. And I will See you guys next time when we finally write the program. I just dropped my ring. Never mind. I'll just get that. And yeah, see you. Take care. Shortest video ever. <laughs>